Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Make It Better. Today we're gonna build one of these. Voila, this is all you need. Materials. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Make It Better on this gloomy day here in where I am. We're gonna do something different today. We are going to take things and compose them into a brand new thing. I found myself in need of a sandwich board or an A-frame sign as some people would call it. You may need one for a wedding or to just wish your neighbors a good day or maybe you're selling Girl Scout cookies or... I don't know. Another reason, you guys are clever. So I did go ahead and give it a quick Google and it seems like I could, you know, give Jeff Bezos money and somebody would deliver one to my door, but I don't like doing that, and it would be an affront to my monkey hands and opposable thumbs. There are also some sketchy websites that sell some stuff that's too good to be true pricing, and then there's also the option of ordering something like this and getting the full spinal tap, and not the good one where it goes to 11, but where your Stonehenge you thought was gonna be huge is actually quite small. So, we're gonna build one today, and we're gonna do it the simple way, because I also, saw all the videos people made about these things and they can really overcomplicate it and you know how we are we're gonna we're gonna keep it simple voila this is all you need in fact it's a little more than you need but let's go through it we have an impact driver aka screw gun any kind will do we've got some shorty screws these are one inch we've got a tape measure which is debatable we hardly need that we have a speed square, also sort of like, well, do we even need it? Glue, you could skip this if, if you didn't have any, and you can use wood glue or any kind of fancy glue that you want. I happen to have kindergarten approved Elmer's white glue that's been sitting around for many years. And then we have a way to cut wood, which in our case is a battery operated circular saw and the required accompaniments and a pencil. There are a lot of ways to cut wood out there. I prefer something like this. Now this is a bit oversized for most DIY projects, but I do consider it safer than a regular circular saw. But we're gonna use this because this comes in most battery operated tool packages that a beginning DIY kind of person or new homeowner might have and might have the room to store. Not only is that other saw a bit heavy on the budget, think uh, 250 to $350, for just that saw, although it's very useful, you can these days buy a five tool battery operated kit that will get you through most projects for around 300 bucks. And I highly recommend it. Now, if you don't have that money or you don't feel comfortable, a regular old push pull Amish elbow powered miter saw will do the trick with a miter box. I highly recommend investing in a tool set that you can learn to use and get better at. We're gonna use this, I'm gonna show you how to do it safely and how to cut lines that are straight. Materials, three sticks of one by three primed trim board. So this is supposed to go around your doors or your windows or whatever, but it's already primed. And that means in my case, it's actually painted white. And that is gonna be our finish for this. If you wanted a different color, it's a great base for painting. The only reason to not get this is if you want to stain your wood frame, which you can do, but don't buy primed stuff if you want to do that. This is the simplest, easiest version. We're also going to need a hinge. I'm choosing piano hinges. Now you can buy them in really long lengths and then cut them down, right? If you have the means, but if you don't, just buy one foot sections. Biggest time saver of them all. In my hand, I have a pre-cut two foot by four foot piece of MDF. One side has a black chalkboard on it. One side has a white whiteboard on it. I wanna use the black chalkboard side, but you could use the whiteboard side. It, you just have to put the other side out from what we're gonna do. Now, I'm not sponsored by anybody and I will never be sponsored by the Home Depot the way that I talk about the experience of shopping there, but all of this stuff is indeed from the Home Depot. Other home improvement stores might carry it, but I knew that they carried these things and they are going to be our time saver for today. So I may as well tell you guys where to find them. Look elsewhere if you prefer other stores, but that's where I got them, not sponsored. 
So we are not going to cut this down. Uh, in my opinion, experience, whatever, a sandwich board is best viewed from a distance, you see. So you want to catch somebody's attention coming down the road, and then that requires bigness in your words. Once you get up close to it, well, hopefully they're looking at the thing that you're trying to draw them to. So these will stay four foot by two foot. Now we've just got to build a frame for them. We're using the dimensions inherent to the material. So a tape measure is barely necessary. We're gonna have to cut one thing in half and that's important. What I need is a piece to go across the top and I want it to run all the way across the top. And I'll show you exactly why later. And then there's a helicopter. Got it lined up on this side over yonder. Just make a mark where the board ends. Take this thing. Jam it right across. Now it's time to cut that thing. So choose your method of wood cutting. Choose wisely. Every one of these saws has a way to set the depth of the blade relative to the foot. This slides on your work surface, this cuts through your work surface. So we're gonna set this for our material. Now, to do this correctly, all you have to do is slide the guard up, place your saw next to the material, like so, and then you're going to adjust up until the blade is protruding past the edge of the material, but not more than half of the thickness of your thumb. We'll call this the rule of thumb. It is a bit grim, but the idea is that should you be holding this incorrectly or make some mistake, you're lessening the amount of mistake and let's say your time searching for the nubs of your fingers. There we go, we got a mark. So now we've already set our saw, it's time to figure out how to cut the wood. So I wanna keep this side, the dimension on this board from the end here to the mark is correct. This is the side I'm not keeping with a little X and putting a little X there is pretty standard practice. And here's why. The blade itself, right, has some thickness, roughly an eighth of an inch. So if I cut on this side of the line, my board will be an eighth inch short. If I cut down the center of my line, it'll be about a sixteenth of an inch short. And if I cut with the blade riding the edge on the outside of the line, I have a very good chance of actually getting the length that I intended. So let's do that. These little grooves do matter and in theory line up with the blade, but I feel like the better practice is to line your blade up right where you want, which for me is this side of the blade against the line. I'll slide my speed square over and hold it firmly against the wood. And that gives me a surface to run my saw against that is straight and square. In addition, it helps me keep my hand well away from the saw, holding the wood, holding the square, holding the saw in this hand. So once everything's lined up properly, meaning the way I want to, I'm looking at the blade through here, holding my square, everything's lined up. You wanna back off the material, start the saw, and then push through the material in one even steady motion. Don't forget your safety gear. And there you have it. We have a nice clean cut. The thing about keeping a solid motion all the way through is, well, gravity is gonna start to, you know, take its, its toll here. And if you kind of stop with it not quite cut all the way through, this is going to snap off and you're gonna leave a rough edge, which you don't wanna do. But a little practice will make you better at it. All right, sports fans, we're gonna start assembling as we go. So time to gather up your glue if you have it. If you don't, that's fine. Your screws and your impact driver. All right, gang, gotta choose the right screws here. So we have three quarter inch material and three sixteenths inch material. So if you like doing mathematics, that's basically 15 sixteenths worth of material. So your screw doesn't wanna be longer than 15 sixteenths, or you can take a tape measure so you don't do fraction math and go, hmm, that's 15 sixteenths. Or you can just take your screw and go, yep, that'll do. And take our official let's make it better glue bottle. You know. Go crazy with it, just like you learned in kindergarten. 
We're gonna jam this on there. Obviously put your good side up, whatever you've determined to be the better of the two sides there. We're gonna line it up with the top, line it up with the sides. Lost my screw gun already. Back in action. Take our screw gun, go in through the bottom. Look, we're doing this because we're fancy. If you want to, by all means, put the screws in from the top. It just means you'll see the screws. Some of you more established, uh, let's make it betterers might say, well, geez, why aren't you doing that with a staple gun or a brad nail or, or a whatever? And I say to you, well, all of those options would work. I am kind of trying to stick within the realm of toolkit tools that you might purchase all as one. Brad nailers, staple guns, not only do you need that tool, you also, you know, need your compressor. Oh, and it's gonna rain now. Swell, perfect. Gang, the rain is continuing, but we're gonna press on. So hopefully you can still hear things besides the sound of rain hammering on this roof like a tin drum. We're at the one point where a tape measure is gonna come in handy. Now, the piece we're dealing with here is actually very interestingly labeled. 23 30 seconds, which is very close to three quarters, by two and a half, by eight. All right. If you put a tape measure on it, it turns out the two out of those three dimensions are actually pretty accurate. You might be surprised to find out which one is not. What we have here is eight foot and a quarter inches. We are going to be turning this eight foot piece, well, eight foot and one quarter inch piece, into our legs for our A-frame sandwich board. Now, if we just believe that it was indeed eight feet long and cut it at four feet, well, we would have a piece that is a quarter inch longer on one side. So we're actually gonna measure it, put a line on the middle, and in this case, we're gonna cut right along that line. So eight feet and a quarter inch divided by two is four feet and one eighth of an inch right about there. And in this case, we're gonna cut right through that line with our saw blade. All right, so we started with a two foot by four foot chalkboard piece from Home Depot. We ran a piece all the way across the top and we're running our side pieces down under that. Single piece cut in half leaves us about two and a half inches of little bitty stubby cute legs. And that is because we ran this all the way across the top. So we're using this width to push everything down to give us these cute little legs. So now it's time to go ahead and attach these guys, which I'm gonna do exactly the same way. Glue bottle, couple screws in from the back. All right, we have one more piece to cut to finish this side. We need a piece that goes here to here. Just like always, there's a bunch of ways to figure out what that is. We could jam a tape measure in here and measure. We know that this distance from the outside to the outside is two feet and that this is two and a half inches and that this is two and a half inches. So we can take two feet and subtract five inches and come up with one foot seven. And for those of you adverse to math and or using a tape measure, well, just put the board in place and make a little mark. It'll be close enough. How many screws? I don't know, as many as you feel like. I think I put four or five in the long ones, three across the short ones. You'll know, you'll know. Hey, look, we got a thing. Now I'm going to build the other one exactly the same way. I'll see you in, well, for you, no time at all when we have both of them. We'll turn it into a thing. One, two. All right, gang, to attach the two together, I'm going to use piano hinge or continuous hinge. I have a two foot piece, which is the width of our A-frame madoodle sandwich board thing. If you can't find a two foot piece, get yourself to one foot pieces. I think it's called a piano hinge because its most common function is to hide all of the magic that happens inside the piano behind all the wood. So that like when you open it up, you can see all the elves that do all the clanging. If you don't want to use it, don't. Grab yourself some of these doohickeys. Still hingy, it'll still work. Now the thing about this stuff though, is it only opens a certain amount in one direction, right? 
That's all we're gonna need, but that means we're gonna want sandwich board here and sandwich board here so when it closes, it closes all the way. All right, first part's easy. Screw the hinge on to the side that is most convenient to you. Probably the last one you finished putting together. Watch this magic. Stay. Nailed it. Uh, you do not, by any means, need to hit every screw hole. We're not dealing with that kind of weight. But, by all means, if your OCD says do it, get in there and do it, baby. Maybe don't. Maybe just this is a good place to show a little restraint, you know? All right, so I just lined them up top to top. I got about a quarter inch or three sixteenths gap on both sides. You definitely want it to be even. I'm going to eyeball it. Not even going to look, really. I didn't even sweep the floor. Just kind of put it there. You can do better. Lay down a moving blanket. Some of that Amazon cardboard you get laying around. Alright. Now, let's see how she does. Yep, that's doing what we want. <laughs> well, that looks like one of those. Hang on, let me show you, let me show you. That's it. There, there it is. Bam, like magic, it's standing. So, You can add a little string thing if you're afraid it's just gonna go, you know, and do the splits on you. It's not necessary, but don't let me stop you. All right, gang, so that's about it. Grab yourself some sidewalk chalk and spread the message to the world that you think the world needs to know that it might not know unless you put a sign out for them to know it. Just like this. Subscribe to Let's Make It Better because it's pretty good. That's my message. Good luck on your projects out there. We'll see you next time on Let's Make It Better.